Helping Seniors Television, all about improving quality of life for seniors. If you're a senior, know a senior, or plan to be a senior, then this show is for you. It's all about helping you develop your own aging plan so you can age actively and with dignity. Helping Seniors Television, from the Helping Seniors Network of Information, Education, and Resources. Thank you everybody for having me here today. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here on behalf of Mobile Dermatology Health. Um, we've really taken pride to go out and to go into different uh, parts of the communities um, and educate others about sun safety. It's really important. I think it's one of the last things that we think of. And I can you know, say that I'm guilty of that too. Um, as I was, you know, when we're younger, we like to be out in the sun, we like to play. It's, it's always been a thing where if you were sick, you were out in the sun. You get, you know, your daily dose of vitamin D, and that's great. And the sun is 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 a good source of vitamin D, but with you have to have some uh, limited time in the sun. So they recommend that in order for us to get enough dose, especially us ladies, of vitamin D, 15 minutes is enough three times a week in the sun. You don't want to do more than that. Um, you know, so that's you know that's your yeah you you don't want to do more than that. And if you're gonna if you're gonna be out, try to seek some shade. Um, it's really important because a lot of times the damage that we have suffered or the damage that we've endured on our skin has come from when we were children and all the sunburns and all the blistering that we had on our skin. Um, it's a direct cause of what we're seeing now. Um, so it's really important, I think, to go ahead and get your annual skin exams um, with your dermatologist. Doesn't matter who, doesn't really necessarily have to be us, but if it is us, we'd be more than happy to come see you. One of the things that we do as a mobile dermatology clinic is that we come out to you. So we bring the convenience to you. There's no extra charge to you. It all goes through insurance and it goes through Medicare. And a lot of times um, our patients aren't aware that these resources are available to them and they're not aware that, you know, Medicare does pay for this. So it's kind of like an annual at your primary, except it's an annual for your skin. And I'd be, you'd be surprised how many times we'll go out and we'll see patients and you know, they're like, oh, no, I don't have anything. I'm not really worried about anything. And the next, you know, we're looking at something and it's like, yeah, that spot is definitely of some concern, you know. And I think a perfect example is someone that uh, we saw a couple of days ago. He had no knowledge that he had a melanoma on his scalp. A gentleman that just, you know, he was like, what's a skin exam? So, you know, we took the time to educate him on what it was. Uh, you know, it was a, an exam that we did. It was a free skin exam that we did at a health fair. And um, go and behold, we were able to diagnose a melanoma. Now, here's the important catch. You want to make sure that you get these things diagnosed on time. Why? Because melanoma is one of the most aggressive forms of skin cancer that there are. It has a tendency to travel to other organs. So we want to make sure that we catch these things on time. A lot, of a lot of times we can confuse it with an age spot. So some of these type of skin cancers or these lesions um, can be skin cancers that not quite necessarily may hurt or may bleed. I've had patients in the past where they're like, well, I had a little spot. It was kind of itchy. So we took a look at it, and sure enough, it was a melanoma. So we want to make sure that we stay on top of our skin. Our skin is one of the largest organs in our body, and the last thing that we think about to protect. So what are the important measures that you can take in order to protect your skin, um, especially if you're going to go on that cruise? Because um, I think I would sign up for that myself. Uh, is definitely you want to have travel size items with you. So you want to maybe have a travel size uh, skin um, skin uh, um, sunscreen with SPF 30 or higher. What does the number represent? It basically lets you know how much protection you'll have against different types of UV, UVB rays. So the higher the rate, the higher the protection is. So anything SPF 30 or higher is great to have. The key to this is to reapply every 80 minutes. Sunscreen, one application is not enough. If you're going to be out in the sun for longer periods of time, you need to remember to reapply. So what I carry all the time when I go out on vacation or when I'm out and about, um, I make sure I have my little kit. Uh, it's a little bag. I have my little toiletries in there. And I'll have sunscreen in there. I'll make sure that you, you know, wear your sunglasses too. You want to protect your sun, uh, your eyes against the sun. So that's very important. You want to make sure that you're constantly reapplying the sunscreen every 80 minutes. If you're going to be out in the pool, make sure that you reapply as well. Sometimes, sometimes you can have the sunscreen wash off after you get off, uh, get out of the pool. 
So you wanna make sure to reapply. Also, make sure you have a nice wide brim hat. Try to make sure that you have a wide bin, a brim hat so that you can go ahead and have a broader protection against the sun. Want to make sure to protect your ears. Want to make sure to protect your eyes, your neck. So when you're applying the sunscreen, please, you're gonna for your face alone, you're gonna probably need about a, um, a tablespoon of sunscreen. It's gonna include your ears, the neck area, the face. Sometimes they have like sprays and you may wanna, you know, first the scalp, you can use that as well, especially for the gentlemen who don't have hair. You can, you know, use the spray on your scalp. That's very important. You wanna make sure you protect your scalp. Um, another thing is too, it's very important if you can, do your own screening at home. Advocacy starts with you as patients. I always recommend once a month, after you get out of the shower, make sure you look at your skin, see if there's any lesions that have appeared or that may be changing. Um, if you have a spouse or you have a partner, just let them know to check your back. If there's anything that you see, just take a little marker or a pen, circle it. So that way when you call us and, you're, and we come out to see you, we can identify the lesion that concerned you. So that way, you know, we know what we're looking at. We could take a picture of it. We can uh, take a sample and we'll send it to the lab. So those are the steps that you definitely can take. Another important thing is if you're gonna go out for a walk, try to wear UPF clothing. It's special clothing, clothing that's made for protection against the sun. You know, or if you can't get that, you can wear a long sleeve and maybe some comfortable pants that aren't too thick. Uh, very important to protect the, the legs as well. A lot of the ladies, what we see is basal cell carcinoma in the legs because a lot of times we wear shorts or skirts and we don't wear sunscreen. We don't wear sunscreen on, you know, on our legs, our, our arms. Sometimes I've seen ladies that just apply it in their face, but we need to apply it all throughout the body um, or at least the exposed areas of the sun, uh, that are gonna be exposed to the sun. So it's very important to take those steps, especially seek shade. You don't want to be out in the sun for too long. Um, again, like I said, 15 minutes is enough sun exposure for you to get your daily dose of vitamins. Uh, and the other, the other thing is seek your dermatologist at least once a year if you haven't had history. If you are someone who were finding basal cells, squamous cells quite often, you need to be seen every six months. If you've had a melanoma, we're seeing you every three months. There's times where these melanomas can reoccur or they can appear in different places. If you've had family history of skin cancer, you wanna make sure that you're seen with a dermatologist. Sometimes these things can be genetic. Um, you know, a good example, my husband, he's a redhead. I'm constantly having him see a dermatologist. Why? Because they're more susceptible to melanomas. You know, genetically, they're more susceptible to melanomas. So if you've had a mother, father, sister, or brother who's had a melanoma, you wanna make sure that you're seeing your dermatologist. So these are little tips that I can share with you, but just make sure that you have the proper tools necessary to go ahead and have that protection. It's very simple, it's very quick. You just reapply, make sure you stay on top of it. And these are things that can help you lessen the risk of sun can uh, oh, sorry, of cancers in the skin. Um, so the more that you frequently see your dermatologist, the less we'll find. But we're definitely here for you. And these are little tips that I wanted to share with you. I don't know if you have any questions or any concerns that I might be able to answer, but if you haven't already been to the back of my table, there's a neat little tool here, here. And this little tool speaks about the ABCs of melanoma, okay? So the A stands for asymmetry. What does that mean? If it's a nice round lesion and I can draw a line in between and both sides match, that's a normal lesion. If it's a lesion with borders that are rust, and that don't look nice and round, then we need to take a look at it. What does the B stand for? It stands for borders. It has to have nice, round, even borders. Okay, we don't wanna see rough borders. Color is very important. We want one flush color throughout that lesion. If we have two colors and we're seeing two different colors intertwined in that lesion, then we know something's going on. It might be a melanoma or it may be uh, a dysplastic nevus that can have a chance of turning into a melanoma over time. <laughs> C is for color. So again, just take a look at the color and make sure it's all one flush color. D is for diameter. Anything larger than six millimeters is something that we need to take a look at, okay? Sometimes uh, as we get older, we start um, noticing that certain lesions start to change. So they can either grow uh, in size or change in color. So we wanna make sure that we take a look at that. Um, as an adult, you stop producing moles at a certain age. So if you see something that's new that popped up, 
make sure that we take a look at it. E is for evolving. So we wanna make sure have any of these changes that I've discussed prior, have they appeared? Am I uh, feeling itchy in that lesion? Am I bleeding? Um, is it not going away? Anything that doesn't go away after two weeks, we definitely wanna take a look at. It's definitely not a bug bite. It might be a skin cancer. So these are little tools that are important. There's also a little ruler there that you can use to measure cer certain lesions that you might feel have changed. It's a really good, important tool. And um, you know we love to share this information with you because again, not everybody's educated on what to look out for. So these are important things and it's not meant to scare you, it's just meant to prepare you. Okay, well, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Yes. Is a mold susceptible to be an L? Certain moles, yes. Certain moles can be susceptible to changing. Uh, certain moles can be susceptible to turning into melanoma. Um, again, um, there's a dark mole that sometimes appears in adulthood and it's called a dysplastic nevi. And a lot of times what we like to do is we like to do a deep shave of that. Once we've gotten a confirmation from the pathology lab that it is one, we like to do a deep shave to remove it. Why? Because eventually sometimes those things can turn into a melanoma. They're very, very dark moles. So sometimes they're kind of black in color. So you want to take a look at that and make sure you get it checked. So when we come out to you, we have our little bag. It's a little tool bag. We have everything we need in there. We have the liquid nitrogen. So if you have any actinic keratosis, which is a precancer, we can go ahead and freeze that. Um, so we have that with us. And we also have local anesthetic with us. So it, none of this, these biopsies will ever be done under general, it's all local. So you get a little uh, injectable under the lesion. Uh, we wait for it to numb up a little bit. It just takes a few seconds and then we'll shave it. And then we'll send it out to the pathology lab. It usually takes about maybe uh, five to 10 business days, depending on the lab, uh, to get the results. And then the provider, she will be in contact with you. Her name is Jessica. And she will discuss at that time with you what the results are. And then she'll meet up with you at a follow-up appointment to further see what options you have as far as treatment. Yeah, this thing, uh, this patient, physician's assistant or? She is a PA, so she's a physician assistant. She's been doing this for over 10 years. And I will say she's one of my favorite people. Why? Because she really takes the time and the dedication to speak to her patients, educate them. And also if you have a family member or let's say you have a power of attorney and they want to know what's going on, she's making that phone call too. And then she's also trying to see what's the best treatment for you. You know, it will fit you. And does she interface with a uh, bunch of dermatologists or? We have a um, we have an overseeing physician who's a doctor, and he's the one that oversees her. Mm -hmm. Yes. About skin tags. Skin tags. Uh, so skin tags. It's something that's more. It's considered cosmetic. So unless it's bothering you, it's itching or it's bleeding, that's something that's considered cosmetic. Um, a lot of times the insurance will cover it only if it's starting to become symptomatic. But for the most part, sometimes some, uh, the skin tags come up because of a lot of rubbing. Sometimes shirts or even necklaces can cause skin tags. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, sir. Did you say Medicare covers this? Yes, Medicare, yes. We go through Medicare. So we'll go through your insurance. Uh -huh. Any other questions? What what advantage? Uh, yes. Yep. Any others? All right. Well, it's been a pleasure. So I actually have one or two that I just want to throw out. Yeah. About applying sunscreen. Uh -huh. Is there a difference between the sprays and the creams? Like, is one better? Do one last longer? Because it, obviously, it's easy to stand there and hose yourself. Down yeah. Sprayer, <laughs> it's good. They're all great, to be honest with you. It just depends on what you like. But when it comes to the spray sunscreen, you want to make sure that you probably maybe use uh, the spray closer to the skin because when you're spraying, this, the sunscreen tends to go out to the air. So you might not get a lot of application. And what I suggest a lot of times to patients who use the spray, if you want to just spray it on your hands and spread it. Um, Cause I know some sprays, they're a little bit more sheer than the cream and some people don't really like the heaviness of the cream. But for the most part, um, just make sure that if you are spraying it, spray close. So if we're like putting uh, the cream on our, mm -hmm. so is it 
the visibility of it, like, you know, it comes on like, <laughs> are you supposed to get it all the way rubbed in or, or does that make? So it's honestly good to get it. Um, it's good to actually get the sunscreen rubbed in really well. A lot of times the mineral ones will be a little chalky. So they're going to be a little bit more, they're going to be thicker. And sometimes you really can't get it all in, but it's good to make sure that you do rub it in and you have a good application of the sunscreen. So you have a broader coverage. So another question, because they talked they talk to us, if you've been on the uh, Healthy Seniors Cruise, they talked to us about this at Ocean K. They said they want you to use what they call reef friendly. Yes, yes. So there are um, certain places that will ask you for reef friendly uh, sunscreens because some of the chemicals in some sunscreens can affect those reefs. So that's why. If it's bad for the reef. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's been a debate for a long time because uh, I always get asked this question every time I go um, to give a, a lecture. Um, so the guidelines that we have in the U.S. are different than the guidelines in Europe. Europe has stricter guidelines. So you really want to just do research and look up your sunscreen. Sometimes you can even go online and you can see which sunscreens have had recalls. Um, some chemicals in certain sunscreens have been known to cause certain carcinogens. So you wanna make sure that you stay on top, you look at the back label and you see what's there. And again, you can Google the name of the sunscreen and you can see if there's been recalls. For the most part, if, you know, if you're a little bit more concerned about that, I always say you can always stick to mineral sunscreens. Those are mineral, they're natural ingredients. So yes. So, and related to that question, you know, I guess I noticed on the bottom uh -huh. of the sunscreens, there's an expiration date. Uh -huh. How important is that? It's very important, yes. Because um, basically, if the product has expired, it may not have as much strength as something that, you know, is still within date. So you want to make sure that you always check that. If it's expired, just get, your, get yourself a new one, throw that out, because it might not be as strong as, you know, when it didn't expire. <laughs> That's good. So, uh, and back to the question about like, if somebody, what, at what point should somebody start saying like, I need an annual skin checkup? Like, you know, maybe you have never thought about it. Yeah. And would somebody say like, how they should probably do I think if you've never had one before, um, again, like, you know, I said earlier, we had somebody recently that had never had a son, uh, um, had never had a screening before. And there's always a myth because it's like, well, you know, I have olive tone skin or I'm a little darker. Um, you know, I, I'm not gonna suffer from skin cancer, there's no way. Well, it's a myth, we all can suffer from skin cancer. It doesn't matter what color, what tone you have. Um, it's really important, why? Because these are things that um, can be preventative. We can find melanomas, if you didn't even know you had one, we can find it on time. The worst part is to find a melanoma when it's at stage four, why? Because it's probably spread somewhere else. Now we're probably having to see oncology and your quality of life may not be, you know, it might not be very long, you know? So we wanna make sure that we stay on top of those things. Cause again, I always tell people, I'd rather have quality, doesn't matter what age I am, I'd rather, be have, I'd rather have quality, be comfortable, be happy, than to be suffering towards the end and have to worry about something that could have been prevented. Uh, yes. Should you put it on before your makeup? Sunscreen, yes, also. Apply before you go out to the sun. Very important. So if you're going to have your first application, apply while you're, while you're home, then go out. It even says it on the sunscreen, and a lot of people don't know that. But it'll say, apply before you get sun exposure. So no certain amount of time. So you want to, like, that's why I say, before you leave home, put that sunscreen on. I have a, in my vanity at home, I have the sunscreen, like just like I have my toothbrush and toothpaste. I have it on the vanity. I have my cleanser, my moisturizer, and my sunscreen. So for the ladies who are, you know, doing skincare in the morning, it's important, wash your face. You can moisturize and then apply your sunscreen. Oh, so put the sunscreen on top of the moisturizer? Yeah. Yep. You can put the sunscreen on top of the moisturizer. Okay. That doesn't... It doesn't, it doesn't affect anything. Yep. So that's really important. You're saying that's the most effective way to be about doing it. Yeah, most effective way, yes. Just remember, just have it on your vanity. It's just like brushing your teeth. Yeah. Yes. 
maybe a, I don't want to say a dumb question, but for, uh, for like myself, I, I normally don't go outside. Uh-huh. But I do go outside. It's my house, my car, put a hat on, uh-huh. go food shopping or something. To come back. Mm. I don't use sun degree. Okay. So I'm exposed to work and read it. Okay. Do you drive? I drive. You're getting exposure as you're driving. You get exposures through windows. And to be honest with you, melanomas also occur where the sun doesn't shine. So you want to make sure that you look at, you know, I, we've seen melanomas in between the webs of the toes, you know, in mouths. So if you've had a melanoma, you know, you want to make sure that you let your other physicians know too, because the dentist can also take a look at your mouth, make sure you don't have anything growing there either. So, yep. So just because you don't really get exposed or you feel like you don't get exposed, because that's a good question. It's not a dumb question. Um, I get that all the time. You know, um, a lot of people are like, well, I don't, I don't really go outside. I'm not really out in the sun all day long. But you're driving, you're home, and you're getting exposure through your windows. And with that, is that just what if you, like I said, if you go out like he does, really? not at me, done the old bag? What I mean... I think one, one application should be fine if you're only going to be out for a little bit. But again, you know, if you're going to be out all day and let's say you're driving, you're going from place to place and you're running errands before you know it, a few hours have gone by and then you finally make it home. You've already had exposure to the sun. You said something about the windows in the house. I, uh, I have eagle in, so uh, I to reflect it out and not the sun in. So what about that? I mean, that might help you. You know, that, that's probably going to be something that's going to be a great tool to have, you know, a good benefit. But still, you know, if you have other types of windows, your normal windows, you're still getting exposure. Yes. So my 25, year well, then 25-year-old daughter had a melanoma on her leg and it was mm-hmm. free and it was, it was very lucky that they found it. And, but she was, you know, they cut it out. Um, and she's going on a regular length to have it. Mm-hmm. But she still goes out in the sun and she, I mean, it is where, I mean... And I kind of thought I had read all the that you read that it's not always caused by the sun. Like, well, no, it's different. Sometimes it can be genetic. Which, I mean, I don't know where she... Yeah, sometimes it can be genetic. So that's something that... The sun can definitely... Exacerbate. The sun can definitely exacerbate it. But I would say, you know, a lot of times some of these things can be genetic. That's why, that's why I tell people it's not just, you know, it's not just the sun and the exposure. It's also genetics. And that's why we always advocate to do the skin exams because, you know, again, these are things that can be prevented. And I'm glad they caught it on her because I've seen young people, you know, pass from this, from from melanoma. So she will be somebody that will always be checked, always. So, yeah. So it's, you know, it's a good thing that they caught it on time. And I mean, being in the sun because she's still young for so many look fun. I mean, is that. Being in the sun, I would say she needs to, you know, use the, use the UPF clothing if she's going to be out for a long period of time. Definitely take preventative measures to not, you know, make things worse. So just to have prevention. Um, again, you know, the sun is something that can also add to that. But, you know, just as long as she takes preventative measurements, I think that, she, you know, she should she should be fine. Yeah, some umbrellas will have the U, some umbrellas will have the UPF protection, but you have to check. So, yeah, that's really important. Again, it's just like the shirts, the pants. Um, You know, my husband, he's an aviation mechanic, and he's out in the sun all day. And the first thing that I made sure to get him was those UPF shirts. And it's been a world of a difference, especially, you know, also a wide brim hat. Um, Again, you know, he's he's a redhead. Um, You know, they have a lot of predisposition for skin cancer. So, you know, prevention is the key. So where do you get those shirts? You can get them on Amazon. You can get them at Walmart. You can get them at Target. And I've heard. Yeah, see, not yeah, Sports Authority or Dicks. Yes. Ow. You're still kicking your husband on a regular basis. Has it reduced it, or is it basically he has? Thankfully, he hasn't had anything yet. Thankfully, but I do. You know, he always gets checked. I always stay on top of him. Again, he has a lot of freckles, so um, he's the type of person that definitely would get mole mapping because he's got. He's just. Lots of freckles, lots of moles. So just as long as we stay on top of it and we make sure that there's nothing, you know, because, again, melanoma can pop up at any time, anywhere. 
So you might have not had it, you know, for a long time. It could be, you know, something that might have happened in a few days or a few weeks. So those are things that, you know, you definitely want to make sure that you keep on top of. But again, if you do, if you do your regular skin checks, you're staying on top of it. You're doing your homework. It's just like going to the primary, getting your annual done. You're making sure everything's good with your blood, correct? So it's the same thing with the skin. So you just stay on top of it. And, you know, the, the, the less we're going to have to do biopsies on you. Well, yes. Yeah, I listen on you. Uh, how did it uh, such cleanse? Yeah. Is there a place to recycle? I don't want any to throw it. Oh, I would have to do some research on that one. This one, I got to go to the landfill. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure, but I can look that up and see if I can get you that information. That's a good one. That's a good, that's a good point. I've never thought of that one. Yep. So related to that question, how accurate is the expiration date? <laughs> so, so what I mean is obviously it's a year old, don't use it, but I mean, is there any wiggle room? I think maybe, I think maybe the, the wiggle room may be like a month or so after, but I, I really want to go past six months, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, yeah. for those of us who have stopped clock. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same thing with the creams, you know, like they, they don't, you know, once they're expired, you want to make sure you, you toss them out cause they're not, they're not that great. Yeah, they break down. I've checked if it's out of expiration. Yeah, not many do. But yeah, a lot of products have expiration dates on them. Yeah, for because again, the chemicals in them only last a certain amount of time. All right. So with that, uh, it's uh, about on a yearly basis, new and improved what's come up. I'll get these uh, lotions and that. So I think they're always improving them. And I think that once there's a recall, they, they do do a good job about pulling them off the shelves um, and then basically improving their formulas. Um, I know a few years back, I know there was a couple, you know, Neutrogena products that were sunscreens that were pulled off shelves because they had found uh, chemicals in them that were carcinogens, you know. But of course, you know, they, they were just in small amounts, but still we got to pull them off to make sure that you know, no one's affected by them, so. I'm Joe Steckler. Thank you for joining our program today. I'd like to remind you that our senior information line is available to you at 321-473-7770. There you can get help and direction that could be helpful for your specific situation or circumstances. The work of helping seniors is very important, but we can't do it alone. That is why our sponsors here in Brevard County are so important. I'd like to thank our many area sponsors, businesses and medical providers who support the mission of helping seniors that help us carry the cost of our media efforts. If you'd like to join us either as a business partner or simply donate as an individual, we welcome your call at 321-473-7770. You are always welcome to visit our website at www.helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Thanks so much for your help. It does make a difference.